I need to get you guys to really be thinking right now, because as I present this to you, you're going to have to make a decision in what way you're going to start to share all of this with people. Okay. So question, if somebody had to pay you, how much are you going to charge? And you can give one reason, one reason. Why? What is that? Somebody tell me. I would still charge 3% and go for that because there's a lot of work as a buyer's agent that you're putting in there. A lot of education, a lot of um, coordination, a lot of negotiation, a lot of people you have to touch and work with and a lot of gas. A lot of gas. <laughs> I, I agree. So, okay. So Peggy said 3% of the purchase price. Somebody else tell me what you think. You, you got to understand there's no right or wrong answers in here. If you're not, if you're not contributing or participating, you're not learning, you're not growing, you're not wrong in what you say. You're, you're just speaking it out in what you were saying. I'm asking you, I'm the buyer. So if I have to pay you, what do you charge? And what can you tell me one service that you include? Peggy already gave you, well, I'm educating you. I'm negotiating for you. Adela said negotiation. Uh, Peggy, I like your word coordination. I do like that word a lot. It's a good word. So Yasmin, iPhone, Mr. Patel, Adela, my other folks that are on, how much? You can put it in the chat, 5,000, flat 10,000. I guess it's uh, totally depending dependent on the area they're looking for the home and the how far and uh, considering all those factors uh, and the type of the property. So, I mean, it's not gonna be like, you, you, we have to look at each and every component of uh, buyer's uh, demand uh, for, the prop, for the home. Okay, so, and I appreciate you sharing that because Adela also said it would definitely depend on the sales price. So are we saying, buyer's agents, that you're going to charge differently because there's more work in selling a mobile home or less work in selling a mobile home? Is there more work in selling a house that's listed at 1.2 million versus a house that's listed at 4 million? If a residential house is listed for 850,000 and, and a condo is listed for 850,000, is there different work? Yes or no? When, when you think about yes. it, you, go ahead. It's, it, yeah, it's, there's a difference. Okay, so if there's a difference, tell me what one service you would include for one and maybe not for another. Like a, like a staging, drone photography, or uh, uh, I mean, more professional photography for the more expensive homes. Uh, we're, ta we're, talking about, we're talking about buyer's agents today, oh. not seller's agents. So okay. just re rethink that really quick because you're, right, you're on the right place. So we're talking about buyer's agents that actually don't cut us checks but it could, could be coming. Okay. So what do you think? Maybe that's why you were thinking that a, a, different, a different thing in your mind because you were thinking we were talking about seller's agents. Adela said for a lower end purchase, because I don't want to make it unaffordable for a first time buyer, they would get the same service. Okay. You see, here, here's where I want to help everybody understand something. Being a buyer's agent is a big deal. And the challenge that a lot of people have, and they say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna work with sellers because I don't feel I'm worthy yet or have uh, what it takes to be a seller's agent because they're the ones that are paying $65,000, $120,000 in a total commission when we really should be thinking the same when we're working with buyers because buyers still don't have loyalty or allegiance or exclusivity to us. And the only way that we can earn that is to provide amazing service and express to them actually what it is that we do other than just opening a door. 
Anyone can open a door. We have listing agents, seller's agents out there that have teams that hire buyer's agents, which you don't get hired because you're 1099, right? And they say, I need you to be a showing agent for me. Just go show, just go open. So then buyers don't see value in a door opener. How many of you are going to agree, right? So you need to separate yourself from that stigma. It's a stigma, but we aren't doing a great job. So we need to do a better job, 100%. Okay, everyone, Adela says she agrees 100%, thumbs up and smiley faces and whatever you got so that I know that you're there because being in the dark is no bueno. I know sometimes you have to be, but at least you can chat with me and, and let me know what's going on. So let me share with you some things. And like I said, those of you who already know me know I share a lot, okay? So let me get started with sharing the first thing, which is, yes, you need to have a consultation with people, right? You need to. Now, you remember, I am uh, a practitioner just like you. I'm a broker. I'm selling real estate. I have uh, people working with me. And so I'm back out there, boots to the bricks, doing what I do, okay? And I've been in the business for a good long while. So let me make it a little bit bigger. And let's talk about the consultation itself. Mastering, number one, what your dialogue is. And not just winging it should be the same as mastering the dialogue that you have as a seller's agent. You go there with your presentation. What is your presentation? Even if it's going to be digital now. So digital Zoom, whatever it is, I know that a buyer, I don't care if the buyer's buying a condo. I've got a buyer right now buying a condo in Irvine, and it's probably about $750 to $825,000 price range. That's a good amount of money. They're not treated any different right now than our listing for $1.3 million. Just like Adela said, service should be the same. So should be the consultation. So what is your rhetoric and what are you going to say? Hello, how are you? Great. Would you like any coffee, tea, or water? Chit chat. The experience that you're giving people, if you can get them to come in and if you can get them to sit with you, I think is key. Right now, we're so taught in Zillow Premier Agents and all of these leads. Just show them, show them, show them, show them, show them property. Get them to the door and show them property. Okay, fine. But once you've opened a door for them, it's time to step up your game and give them a consultation. Bring value. What do you offer, right? So thank you for meeting with me today. Before we get started, I wanted to briefly review the agenda and how I plan to proceed. We should be able to get through everything within an hour. Please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Already now, what I'm wanting to help you understand is you need to have a consultation. You need to have your rhetoric, right? Thank you, Letty. She said she agrees. Negotiating her fee in the RPA. Yes, absolutely. I love that. I love that. Letty is a seasoned agent. The first step is reviewing the home quest form. Everybody should have a questionnaire. Everybody should have something that they follow in the questions that they're going to ask. When you go to a doctor's office, they ask you a bunch of questions. If they didn't, I wouldn't appreciate it. Don't you want to know what I'm feeling? What's been going on with me the last week? What's been going on with me the last month? These are my symptoms. This, was, this is what's happening. And this is why I'm here. Same thing with a buyer. You think you're just going to remember all your questions? You need to write them down. And when you do, people appreciate that you're listening and taking notes. Somebody who does not look me in the eye, does not listen and does not take notes means they don't care. Okay. Ever go to a, a restaurant where they're just, uh-huh, and you want extra butter, no mushrooms, grilled onions, uh-huh, yeah, and they're not because they think they're all that bag of, bag of chips and then you're, it comes out wrong. I want you to take notes. I want to know that you're listening, right? So the first step is reviewing the home quest form. I call it the home quest form. It's a questionnaire, which you just filled out. You need to send something to them ahead of time, even if you're going to go open and open a door for them this afternoon at six o'clock. I still need to know where you are, where you're coming from. This is going to help me find out about your family, your household, your goals, your time frame. 
and some of the special features that you're looking for in a home. I need to know. I am going to consult with you. If we want to look like a consultant, we need to act like one. The second step is to review the purchase agreement. Whatever state you're in, we have people here from Hawaii and New York and Chicago and Massachusetts, and everybody has different purchase agreements, but we need to give them a sample to review it. This is the contract that we're going to be utilizing with the seller to get you the price and terms that you're comfortable with for when you find your dream home or your property, whatever it is. We will also review several other important documents for your protection. Peggy said it, I'm an educator. What do you mean what other documents? How many other documents go along with the purchase agreement? In California, it's a total of about 23 documents in the bundle. 16 page purchase agreement and the rest of them are a bunch of other disclosures, okay? So we're gonna review some other ones. Maybe you're going to bring up in California, we have a buyer inspection election. It's called the BIE form for short. If you've never seen it, go grab it. Take a look at it. Why would you be presenting that form at a buyer consultation? Because you're letting them know that there's over 33 different types of inspections that they could choose during their contingency period. I'm educating them and informing them, and I'm already showing them that I'm looking out for their best interest, okay? Among many other forms, that's just one. The third step is called envisioning. So this is a visualization process. Now it's gonna help me convert all the features that you're looking for in a home, turn them into the benefits that we use to make large decisions. The process is gonna help me become crystal clear on what's important to you. This you need to memorize, this you need to internalize. So every time you sit with a customer, it should come out similar and the same. You're gonna curve it to the customer, but your process and your system should be the same. You should be just stellar on this, okay? Step four, I will be reviewing my business system the roadmap with you that shares the sales process that I'm gonna be guiding you through. They don't know the process. There's a different process when you buy a manufactured home versus a single family residence. Is there not? Just a few little nuances that are a little bit different. Very similar, but what about your system? How do you help them through the process of when they start to negotiate, when you write the offer, looking at properties, all kinds of stuff, right? Until you close, what's the process? You're gonna share unique tools and strategies that you provide for your clients. Remember the question, if they had to pay me, how much and why? What do your services include? What tools do you have to offer? What strategies do you provide? And do you offer a rebate? Do you offer certain things for certain price points? Maybe you do, and you want to share that with them. Do you have a referral from whatever it is? Okay. How do you work? I work like this. Peggy works one way. And if she were sitting with Adela in another room, Adela would be working a completely different way. And so would Sue. And so would Letty. And so would Peter. But you each need to have your own system, your system. The last step is that we both get to decide if we want to work together. How does that sound? Oh, wait a minute. That's the question. They get to decide if they want to work with you or not. That's where exclusivity comes in. Right now, we need to earn people's trust, loyalty, and exclusivity. Buyers are not exclusive to buyer's agents. Why? Because they don't sign anything and they're not prepared to write a check. However, if you are amazing at what you do, you present value, you tell them what your services include, and you start to educate, you start to negotiate, you start to inform them, you start to bring resources to them, then they're going to go, I'm not going anywhere else. You are my buyer's agent. And you want them to, to get to a place where they're saying, yes, I want to hire you. I'm hiring you, which means I'm hiring you with exclusivity. Okay. So Let's go to the next thing. Here's the home questionnaire form idea. Everybody has one. I'm sure you guys all have one, 
right? Everybody has something. You've either been, you know, provided that some way, shape or form. If not, I'm giving you an idea. But this is what goes into your CRM. This becomes now your understanding of that buyer. I need all this information. Don't assume you have it and don't assume that you have it correctly. Double check it. Find out who else is in, in this process with them. Do I have anybody else that's involved? Brother, father-in-law, grandmas, who else is involved? Get everybody involved, okay? Find out where they currently live, why they live there and why they chose to live there. Even if they're renting, they still had a reason why they chose that house over another rental. It's location, it's the layout. Um, some of them may say, that's all I could find for the price. Okay, then that means that that matters to them, whatever it is. What do you like about where you're living now? What don't you like about where you're living now? I'm on a busy street. I don't like it. I've got kids. It was all I could find. It's near the school, but I'm on a busy street. What will you miss most about where you live? These, these questions are feel-good questions and at the same time, very informative, very simple. Of course, do you currently own or rent might be something you're doing over the phone. And if you own, do you need to sell your current home? Don't miss asking that question. Some people forget even asking that, okay? Now, of course, you get into your new home wants and needs and you start to check them off. My point in presenting this to you is, do you have your own form? Are you winging it? You need to have your own system. I ask questions, we fill this out, and then we move on. This is my process. This is how I work, okay? What cities do you prefer? What are your must-haves and your must-have-nots? What's most important? Other preferred amenities. What's the primary reason for your move? What's your time frame? Are you working with another realtor? Why are we not asking that question? Don't be scared. You need to ask it. If not, you're not really going to be able to get their loyalty from the get-go and you want exclusivity. Buyer broker agreements should not be something that you're scared of. Buyer broker agreement should something that should be part of your process. It is my process. I'm going to look at you. We're going to be done with my presentation and I'm going to be asking you, just like it said, we're going to decide together. Hi, Peter, welcome to work together or not. Am I going to waste all my gas, Peggy? My time away from my little ones or my grandkids to do all of this when you're going to turn around and buy a new home build and forget about me? when I told you not to go or go to an open house because I was busy that day or even had the flu, okay? Financial information, get some information from them and find out. No assumptions, right? What is the source of your down payment? Are you getting it from money that's available? Is it a 401k? Maybe you can't take out that money. Is it an inheritance? Is grandpa giving it to you? Where are you getting it, okay? What do you desire to pay monthly? What is your initial investment? Okay, your system, your system. Okay, next. What do you think is next? What's next is getting inside their head and getting into the envisioning process. This is, you don't have a crystal ball. You can't read their mind. I want somebody to really find out what it is I'm looking for. Ask them questions. Picture yourself in the car. So you're looking at homes. Let's visualize where you are sitting in this car right now. All right. And let's look at the neighborhood. What does the neighborhood look like? What does the outside of the home look like? Oh, I don't like porches. I'm not into porches. I'm not into, um, you know, desert looking type of homes. They're going to start to tell you. Okay. Um, you want to understand what the benefits are as well. How does that make you feel and what's important to you? You guys, this is a very emotional purchase. Exactly. Paint the picture, Letty. And I want, I want to understand what that picture looks like in their head. Because if what I like, and a lot of times we take into account what we like, and it's not what they like. And you're going, I would never, oh my gosh, I would never buy this. Oh. And, and then they're like, oh my God, I love it. it's, it's, it's exactly what I was looking for. You don't do a good job if you didn't ask. 
Okay, so you need to ask. Stop the agent at a home you're envisioning. Describe the neighborhood. Describe the curb appeal of the home. What are the colors? What is the location of the front door in the garage? I don't want a home where you have to share the driveway and you go in one way and then you see your garage door of your, of your uh, neighbor next to them. Those are shared easements. I wouldn't have known that if I wouldn't have asked, right? Describe the amount of light coming out of the front door. Then go to the favorite room. Find out what's important to them. Tell me a little bit about the first room. When you walk in, what does it look like? Describe the features of the rooms and the areas of the property in order of importance to you. First thing for me is the kitchen. I'm going to be in the kitchen. No, I don't really care so much about the kitchen. We eat out. I don't cook. It's all about the family room for me. What is that? Okay. Remember, money's no object. Benefits will be the same no matter the cost. So just tell me if you could have everything you want. What is the greatest thing that's important to you about those features? There's a feature versus a benefit. There's the feature and then how does it benefit you? So what, what about having a block wall is important to you? I have dogs. I don't, I don't want the sound to go to the other neighbors. I don't want fences falling, uh, whatever it is, okay? Envisioning. What about convenience and health? And romance, happy Valentine's Day, and recreation and economy and comfort. Tell me a little bit about these things that matter to you. Prestige. I want the prestige of when you walk in and I want vaulted ceilings and the foyer to be amazing. And that's what I'm looking for. Entertainment. I'm all about entertainment. I'm all about security and comfort. Have them rate in order of importance each of these you know, with 10 being the highest and one being the least. And now it goes into these benefits used to envision your ideal home. What does it mean to be the convenience, the quality of being suited of favorable to one's needs or purposes? Recreation, refreshment of your mind and body, privacy, seclusion, prestige, high standing among others, honor, esteem, whatever that is, entertainment. So you've given them what those definitions are, and you're asking them to put them in order, okay? You wanna understand a little bit more about who they are. This shouldn't take you but 10, 15 minutes, but you've stopped to get an idea as to what's important to them. That to me is huge, okay? Anybody wanna share comments about this and what you feel about envisioning and if you envision now? Anybody envision? Letty says she paints the picture or she likes that painting the picture is really something that we need to be doing. This is where, for me, you become different. Other than that, you're a door opener. I don't want to be looked at as just a door opener. I don't think anybody else does either, right? So we had the home questionnaire form. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Hold on. Okay, so we had the agenda. How are you going to get started? Then we have the home questionnaire form. And then you're going to have different ways that you present. Okay, everybody should be able to see this now. I'm going to show you several examples right now. Listen, I, I would love to see everybody's presentation digitally how you are actually sharing with people how it is that you work. Everybody's different. So if you have something that you give out, let's say you're gonna go show a house to, today, you buy a lead, it's a Zillow, it's whoever it is. And you're gonna go meet them, you're gonna go show a property. What do you present to them when you, when you get there? And if all you can do is do a consultation at the kitchen table in a vacant house, what does it sound like? If, you, if they're gonna give you 30 minutes of your time, can you get through an amazing buyer consultation? And what are you gonna be bringing? What is the folder gonna look like? What is it you're gonna present? So here is something super simple. Home is a family's castle. How we will work with you to help you find the right home. How do you work with them? What is your process compared to everyone else? Okay, we're gonna guide you to find your whole, uh, find your home. Goal and objective. What are your goals and what are your objectives? Our goal is to present you as a buyer's broker. Today's situation, explaining who pays the commission, 
What do you stand for? What do you value and what do you love? What is your mission statement? Do you have one? So you should be taking notes and saying, okay, MJ, she's telling me number one, I need to know what my greatest strength is as a buyer's agent. She's asking me to tell a buyer how I'm different, how I work, what do I offer? What do my services include? If they had to pay me, how much would I charge? And can I explain why I charge that, right? Do I have a mission statement? What does my presentation look like? And can I get through it in 30 minutes and then get to exclusivity to be able to ask them, do you wanna work with me? Do you wanna hire me as your buyer's agent? Here's how I work. Because now we're gonna move into a buyer broker agreement, which you should. And you should not be afraid to ask them to sign with you. If you are, it's because you don't have enough confidence in the delivery and what you offer, okay? So we want to get you to be that much stronger in working with buyers. So they'll say you, 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 you all day. What's your mission? Explain to them what it's going to be like at your first meeting. How you go beyond the MLS. Do you have off-market properties? Do you have investors? In what way do you go off beyond the MLS? Are you going to knock doors for them? Do you have single party compensation letters like the ones I shared with you last week or the week before? And in what way are you using that? What about working with new homes? How do you help them in working with new homes, right? When we find your property, what's next? What's the process? Making the offer. What is the expectation of making the offer? Okay, so very simple. You can give them some tax advantages. You can give them information about schools. You can talk about finance. These are the benefits. You look at the right homes and avoid frustration. You increase your negotiating power with the seller. You close more quickly and you minimize disappointment of not knowing whether or not you qualify. These are the benefits of pre-approving. What are the benefits of working with you? Okay, so that's one example. I'm going to show you some more. Is this good stuff, you guys? Is this good? I don't care if you're brand new and just got your license two weeks ago or you've been doing this for 30 years, okay? The point is, I want to make sure you guys have something really great and that you're presenting good value. All right, let's go and look at something else. I'm going to bring in my other one. Here we go. All right, let's see if you guys can see that. I'm going to double check and make sure. I don't think you can. Yes, you can. Fantastic. I have a few more that I'm going to share with you, okay? So here is another example of a buyer presentation. Maybe a little bit different, maybe a little more wordy. Maybe you want to give something to someone, okay? Let me make sure our Facebook peeps can see this. Scratch that a little bit. What's your commitment of service? What is your commitment? I commit to you that I will. What is it that you will? Plan a home search based on your needs means we already went through the envisioning process. Introduce you to properties and neighborhoods that you meet your requirements based upon our plan, okay? Home finding process. What is it? Help them out. Don't assume that just because they're not first time buyers, maybe they haven't purchased for a while, they're selling their home. And I just don't remember what it was like 20 years ago. How is it today? Is it the same? Is it different? Remind me so I can follow the steps. Looking ahead to the home finding process. How far along are you? I've got a different way to ask questions. The point is, are you asking questions? That's, the, that's what I'm trying to make sure that you're asking questions. Hey, Facebook, are you guys still good? Okay. Okay. And I appreciate it. Letty's on Facebook and she says, I don't have it in writing. And, and, and that's the whole point is we, we want to help you so that you are working towards always becoming better at our craft, right? How far along are you in the home finding process? Look at all these questions. Have you purchased a home before? Um, thinking of previous home finding experience, what were the most positive features of those, of those experiences? If you've never bought a home before, 
What are you looking forward to most in the experience? Are you bringing a great experience to the buying experience? How are you different? I want people to say, buy your house with Peter. The experience was amazing. Even though maybe the escrow had this, that, or the other challenge, working with him was this way. He was systematized. He was structured. Whatever they're going to say about you, it should be what you want them to say. Okay? What is it that you want people to say about the experience of working with you as a buyer's agent? Defining your ideal home. See how I have it in a different light for you? Okay? Some people, it's about social activity. Ask how many people are going to be living in the household. If you're working outside your home, what would you consider a comfortable commute? Even that, that's important. So that you're not taking them places that they don't want to go and then reminding them, why are we going all the way to San Clemente when you work in Torrance? Can you remind me that? In California, that would be a major commute, okay? How to look at homes. It's describing to them. Discovering the right home should be an exciting event as a blank sales professional. So if you work for Remax or Century 21 or um, you know, your own company, your commitment is to be, it's to help them be stress-free and efficient to help them find the property. Identifying things, okay? Financing, super important, right? Estimate of costs. Are we giving buyers a buyer's net sheet? How many of you can tell me in the chat if you do that at consultation? Buyer's net sheet. What are the costs of purchasing? What's it going to cost me? It shouldn't just be coming from the lender. It should be coming from you as well. Things to consider. That's where we talked about the inspections and certain things that they need to be prepared for. Okay. Home purchase summary. Submitting an offer. This is how you submit an offer. This is going to be the process. This is what we're going to do. So as soon as you find a home and you love it, this is how it works. The first step is I'm going to be determining market value with the comparative market analysis. And we're going to go over it first. Oh, so, and then I'm, it's going to take this long to go through the contract together. It's, do you see my, my point? All of you are very intelligent people. So you know what I'm talking about. The point is asking yourself, why would they hire you? Are you worth every dime if you had to say, you're going to pay me $10,000? This is why. They should want to make sure that you get what you deserve because you work hard for it. But you have to explain to them what it is that you do and how you do it and how you're going to take them through the process and this transition, right? What is the transition? Are you helping them, them, them tra transition? You guys, I honestly believe that buyer's agents do more than seller's agents. That is my personal view. Does anybody else feel the same? I think it's really easy many times to sell homes. Why? Because the buyer's agents do a lot of the work. Many times they bring the buyer unless you have an amazing way of selling properties and you bring buyers, okay? So I, I wanna be fair and tell you that that's my personal opinion because look at how much we have to do. Even Peggy said, oh my gosh, the coordination and just keeping it all together and working with the seller's agent and maybe it's a seller replacement property, making sure you're keep dialed in with the seller's agent as well, right? There's a lot, there's a lot. Okay, so. Glossary of terms, different look. I'm going to show you a couple other ones. And then you end it and you're done. Okay. Okay, let me give you a, a few more to take a look at. Where did they go? They're over here. Now, all of you can probably use um, Breakthrough Broker. If you're not familiar with Breakthrough, Breakthrough Broker, that's, that's free. That's free 99. You can go get Breakthrough Broker. But you need, a buy, you need a buyer presentation. Sorry, you need one. If you don't have one, you can go get one like today because it's going to set you apart. So this you can get on Breakthrough Broker. And you can go fill in the blanks. Why I'm the best realtor for you? And what is your unique pro process? You need to know. You, you need to know what your process is. 
If it's one, two, and three, if it's five through 10, it's your process, okay? Testimonials are great. Get them in there. Tell them how long it's going to take to have a discussion and a consultation. It's going to take about 45 minutes, and we're going to go over these things, how I work, going under uh, contract, what the closing process is, right? Financing. We're going to talk about different types of loan in your price range, your jumbo. Let's talk about jumbo today. In your price range, we have several programs. We have CalHAFA. We have a VA loan because you're a veteran and you have a right to choose which one you want to do if you don't want to utilize your VA, right? You, you're going to have to go over those things. I feel like we do so much as a buyer's agent, more so than a lot of the things we discuss as sellers. Does anybody else agree or disagree with me? I'm okay if you disagree. I just think buyer's agents do a lot. Go ahead, Peggy. Agree, agree 100%. I feel like the buyer's agent really is the master of the transaction. Like, I feel like we do so much more than a listing agent does. I mean, there's a lot of um, cooperation between both, but I feel like overall in the activities and the work that needs to be done, the buyer's agent does the majority of it. Amen. I agree 100%, totally. Um, and this is why I'm like this. This is only the beginning of where we are when we're talking about buyer consultations. And I think you really need to have your come to reality conversation in your head right now. And if you're just getting started and you're going, I'm in a good place, MJ, this is good for me. I'm glad that we're talking about this. I'm going to start on the right foot. Or you know what? I'm going to re-energize where I'm at. I don't like the presentation that I'm providing. It's lacking. I'm lacking in luster. Okay. I'm lacking in it completely. And I want to better it. Then it doesn't matter what you choose. Choose something and get started today make a decision on what it's going to look like and how you're going to present. Okay, so that's breakthrough broker, making an offer, the transaction, close it up. See how many little amount of slides? Not a lot of slides, not a lot of slides. Oh, I had a couple of things in the chat too. I have Adela said, I never had a form, but always qualified them with many of the questions that were mentioned. Um, will you be sharing yours with us so we can have a guidance? I'm happy to share. Um, I'm happy to share. Let, let me tell you one of the things like Breakthrough Broker, you can go and, and get that when it's piece cake, right? A lot of times when I share, um, it is nice to see it on paper, right? It's it, old school. I think we got to be old school in the right way because we need to present even digitally. We're doing this on Zoom with a lot of people sometimes, right? Um, we have them speak to a lender. I appreciate what you're saying about that. But we still need to talk to them about their concerns. We should always introduce them more than more to. We should always introduce them to more than one lender too, because they're each going to be identifying with somebody differently, right? Let Let me share another one with you. Let's see if it's over here. And and there's so many cool there's so many cool things out there, you guys. Let's see, did it open up? Probably bigger than I want. Okay, let me, let me show this one to you. Now, some of these are proprietary, so I'm not gonna be able to give them to you, but I want, I want you to understand that you don't need 25,000 slides, okay? You don't. You need to make a decision as to what your process is. That's it. And you're gonna go through some of those samples on Breakthrough Broker, you go back, you're going to look at this and you're going to go, okay, I see what she's saying. Let me, let me go through and kind of take this in. And right now I'm going to ask every single one of you that is watching, and I'm going to look and see who's on Facebook. And I want you to take a minute. I'm going to go slow. Okay. I want you to see some of the differences now compared to the ones that I showed you and how you're going to find your own style. You've got to incorporate your brand in it. Yes. Okay. So let's look at this one. Now, I want you to understand that you're, you're going to come up with your own stuff, right? You may have your mission statement, your vision, the way you want to do it. You can have quotes in here. You can have pictures. How are you making it exciting and attractive 
right now things are the way we view things. Did you see the commercials on Super Bowl? I mean, come on, look at how things have changed, right? Even the way we view memes and all that. A lot of attractiveness in the way the delivery is done. Okay. So we want to do things in a certain style. Take a look at this agenda. Take notes. So what is the agenda? The first one is the agenda. This is how I work. This is what we're going to be going through. I want to share with you. Okay. Number one, we're going to get to know each other a little bit. We're going to go through an envisioning process. I need to get to know you. I want you to know who we are and what we do. What does it mean to work for blank, ABC Realty, I, I, is whatever, right? That's what we just put in there. The power of working as a team. My select services. Tell them who you're going to work with. Introduce your escrow officer and your title people. The resources of the people that are going to back you because you want them to trust who you work with. Your role. What is your role? This is what I do as a buyer specialist. What is their role as a home buyer? You're going to have to do what? When I send you to look at property, I need you to answer me right away. I need you to give me feedback. I need you to tell me. I need you to cooperate. I need you to participate, right? Number two, home searching. My home searching resources are X. My blah, 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 ABC, Realty, Main Street, whatever is this. My mobile app. The guide to buying a home. I have a step-by-step -step guide. Financing, new construction, FAQs, frequently asked questions. Have some. Mark conditions and pricing. How long will a house last? Fair market value, negotiating on a home. Factors to consider when you're making an offer. I know you guys are getting exactly what I'm talking about here. Now, getting to know you, look at the difference in presentation. A little more fun, a little bit more like icons and things like that. I can't give this to you. You need to create your own. I wish I could, okay? But I cannot. This is a proprietary one that belongs to someone else that I'm sharing to give you ideas. So, oh, man, MJ, if I have to go create it. Yeah, everything can't always be given to you. You have to come up with who, who you are and how you want it to be presented, just like all the other ones I gave you. But getting to know you. So you could just say, okay, I'll go on canva.com and create my own. I'm gonna look at a couple of the slides that I like and I like that slide, so I'll snapshot that one and I'm gonna be good to go. I wanna talk about motivation, pricing, timing, decision-making and location. I wanna go over their home type and size, do some envisioning. I wanna talk about floor plans, maybe I don't. I wanna talk about architectural styles, maybe I take that one out. I want to talk about amenities. Yeah, I like that one. What exactly are you looking for? You got to make it you. It's always easy to take from someone else, but now you're not really creating how you want to work. Who we are and what we do. So I'm Peggy Castle. This is who I am. This is what I do. I am Adela. This is who I am. This is what I do. These are my core values. These are my areas that I want you to remember me by. Oh. Okay, so this means like I need to have a retreat with myself and take a two hour retreat for a day or one hour a day for the next five days and develop this. Everyone should be putting me and giving me a thumbs up. Yes, MJ, yes, yes, I do need to be doing this, okay? Where do you work? Sorry about that, I went too fast. Where do you work? I'm lo local. This is where I work. I don't go to San Diego. I'm going to refer it. I don't go to San Clemente. I'm going to refer it. Okay. In Hawaii, if you don't go to Oahu and you're only going to go to Honolulu, you're going to say same thing, wherever it is that you work, you need to tell them where you work. Selecting services. We take care of you before, during, and after your move. How? Just looking at this, and the other ones that I shared with you, tell me yes or no. Am I not bringing value in a different way for them to say, I'm, I'm going with MJ. Are you kidding me? Like, oh my gosh, right? She's got it together. That's what you're trying to deliver. You're trying to deliver that 
to people to go, I wouldn't work with anybody else. I love their struck. I love her structure. I love his structure. I love the delivery. It's what I was looking for. You don't just open a door. Home protection, making the space yours, need storage, need a contractor. I got all those peeps for you. I got resources for you. Okay, by the way, this is all, um, none of those numbers are good or anything like that, okay? Just sample. My role. Ooh, this one, take a screenshot. My role as a buyer specialist, more home buying confidence. When you're choosing a real estate agent, consider the following. Determining housing and community needs, acting as your property specialist, serving as your experienced negotiator, acting as your, Peggy, there's your word, property coordinator. And what is it that you do? Your role. Let's work together. Determine the neighborhoods. Clearly know your criteria. Immediately call me if you found a home online, in the newspaper. Don't go to a builder without me. You see a builder, tell me. I might be up the street, okay? When you're approached by another real estate agent, they're going to appreciate you letting them know that you're working with me. When you go to an open house, tell them how you work. You're trying to establish the fact that they're going to hire you and establish the fact that what? I'm exclusive. Uh-uh. I, I gotta, I put a ring on. We're engaged. Okay. So you don't want to just be dating because if you're dating, they're gonna hop from realtor to realtor. There's no allegiance. I don't want to date my buyers. I want to be connected with them, right? So that we we're dating, we're gonna get married and we're gonna close a deal. And now after we're married and we close a deal, they're gonna be clients for life. That's what you want. Searching for a home. How do you search? By the way, all this can be done and created on Canva which is why I'm showing it to you. You can also create this on flip HTMLs, these flip books that are out there. Look it up. Flip books are a new way to be doing things. So this is also a flip book. I just did it in PDF so you guys could see it. Custom automated searching. How are you searching for homes? They can see everything online, but if you don't see it online. How you're using internet data exchange with other listing brokers and buyer brokers in the MLS. Provide immediate notification on properties that match your criteria with your mobile app. So in every state, every, C every MLS has some kind of mobile app that you could be using and you should be using. So how do you use your mobile app? It's really easy to do this. Over 90% of home buyers use the internet but I want you to get accustomed that there's going to be an app and we can communicate through there. Talk to me, heart it, like it, give me your feedback. What is your process? Here's the guide to buying your home. Different look. People like icons. People like little simple ways to look at things. For somebody, this may be overwhelming and too much. Little squares, I don't like it. So then you go back to a different way and you have a handout. Okay, and your handout can be a different home buying process. But here's the step by step guide to help keep you informed on each step of the home buying process. So, first, you've decided to buy a house. Awesome. The next thing we're going to do is pre qualify you, but we're already going to do that before you tell them how to do it, what you're going to, what your process is, your services. Determine the area and the needs. Now we're going to tour. So, we don't tour right away. I know we met at one house, or we're going to meet tonight at six o'clock but I am gonna ask you to allow me to share with you how I work before we decide to work together. But why are you gonna spend your time doing all this for people who are cheating on you? At the end of the day, you know, I mean, I thought, I thought they were working with Peggy. No, they talked to Peter too. And they're also texting Adela and Sue. Oh yeah, and they met MJ at an open house and they're probably gonna write an offer. See what I mean? There's no allegiance. You have to establish allegiance and loyalty through the fact that you are the badass buyer's agent. Yep, I said it. Okay. Uh, escrow open, the offer's accepted, transferring utility, negotiating repairs. Correct. Congratulations, you bought a house. What's your process? That's the guide. Financing your home, inspection and appraisal. Explain to them. Explain it. Down payment the application, working hand in hand with your lender, what it looks like, how I work with my lenders, 
passing them off to a lender doesn't feel good. I don't like to be passed on to anybody. It, it ever really needs some help with something and you're on the phone with somebody and they go, okay, well, let me pass you on to so-and-so. I've been working with you. Now I'm going over here, working hand in hand, how you do it. Okay, items needed for the application, help them out. Help your lender out. You're working in tandem together. The home inspection, the home appraisal, what it's, what it's about, what it looks like. Explain to them the process. MJ, I'm gonna do all this in 30 to 45 minutes, maybe not. The point is, is that as you ask questions and dive deeper into what's important to them, you're gonna find out as it goes on. And then you're gonna say, remember, I want you guys, we're gonna talk about page eight. And you have it digitally and you go over it. Let's talk about that because that's where we are right now. We're at the home appraisal and I wanna go over it. Uh, what you need to know about buying a new home. They are going to look at new homes. If you think that if they're looking at resale, they're looking at new. So let's talk about it. I was, I've been previewing a lot of new home builds right now for a client who only wants new home. And I'm just going to share this story with you really quick. The, the, the host or hostesses that are inside the, the models. One of them asked a buyer and I, I'm in there and I'm doing my previewing and said, how are, you know, asking a lot of good questions. And the buyer said, we're so confused. All of the houses look the same. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you know, what's the difference between buying new versus buying resale? I'm really concerned about, you know, all of the different steps of when it starts construction or it's already in the middle of construction or if I buy a home that's a quick move in. There's so many different changes and challenges with new home construction. If you don't understand new home construction, go get familiar. So then you can help them through the process, right? It's frustrating when they don't understand the process. And if you don't understand the process, I don't think it's fair that you just get in a commission check because you gave them a name and number and then they sign. They're looking for you to represent them as well. How do you do it? Little home buying glossary, something for them to look at. Terms and definitions, just like there was in the other one. What type of home loan is best? Go over the different types of processes and types of loans that there are. There's over a hundred loans out there, if not more, right? But typically what's the difference between conventional and conforming and non-conforming? Frequently asked questions. Here's the FAQs. What is homeowner's insurance? Why do I need it? Oh my gosh. Will I need flood insurance? When do I arrange for utilities? When's the final walkthrough? When's the actual closing? What does escrow do? What is your debt to income ratio? What does that mean? And why do I need, why is that important? What's the minimum credit score for borrowers on this particular product? How does a 15 year mortgage work? What factors affect my mortgage rate? How can I avoid wire fraud? Good questions. You can come up with your own. How long will a house last? Take a picture of that one. Air conditioning, 10 to 15 years. Windows, 15 to 30 years. Heat pump, 16 years. Roof, 30 years. Exterior paint, 15 years. Carpeting, eight to 10 years. Kitchen cabinets, 50 years. Microwave, nine years. Kitchen sink and faucets, five to 15 years. Refrigerator, 13 years. Gar gar garbage disposal, 12 years. Tub, shower, and faucets. Isn't this cool? Look, you guys can find a lot of these things. Don't think that they weren't found. They're found and then they're incorporated and put into style, presentation, colors, whatever you like, okay? Fair market value, how you're gonna come up with fair market value. Days on market, negotiating. I don't understand. Is it overpriced? Is it fair? They reduce their price. Where are we in this particular zip code? Okay, the longer a home is on the market, generally the lower the price. The length of the time a home is on the market affects the sales price. Talk to them about it. What market are we in? Not every market. We have people from all over the country that, that watch this and in different states. Not every market is the same. So you've got to understand your conditions and why it's on the market so long or why they're still selling like hotcakes. That's what we do, negotiating and helping them understand. Not everybody understands real estate. How much should I offer? That's big. It's a big one. So where did they come up with their price? How are they determining it? We have to help guide them there. So there are other offers 
uh, on the home? Yes. Then it's a seller's market and houses are selling fast. Yes. Offer calculated price. You might be in a bidding war. If it says there are other offers on the home, no. What are the days on market? Is it higher than comparable homes? Then it goes to here and it goes to here. You are the one leading, guiding, and informing so that they can make a great decision. They're trusting you to help them make a good decision to either go forward or to retract. I don't think this is a good home for you and let me tell you why. Based on the market, based on the price, based on the amenities, based on the condition, and based on what I already know and understand what you want and what's important to you. You would never know that without going through an envisioning process and a true consultation. So how many of you could actually confess right now and say, MJ, I don't do a good job at buyer consultations. I need to do better. Anybody want to confess? Because we could all be doing better at buyer consultations. I would say after seeing this, I need to do better. I, I think I have good conversations and education, but I don't go this extra mile with these infographics and providing them actually something that they can have in their hand. Awesome. I appreciate that. Anybody else feel the same way as Peggy? Yes, no, maybe so. Too afraid to say? <laughs> Letty says I need to do better. We, we can always be improving, right? The customer has a right to choose. They may not be cutting you a check, but all they need to do is ghost you not return a call and walk away. Then we didn't do a good job in establishing the fact that they've hired us as a buyer's agent. I'm not going anywhere. Letty is my buyer's agent. And in fact, I'm referring her to the two other people that are now excited that I'm buying because I love the process. I love the structure. I love the delivery. I love how they listen. He listens, she listens. I love that they take notes. They understand me, right? So who are you? Remember, I'm giving you an example of something that's proprietary to another company. And I'm allowing you to see it, not for you to take it verbatim and copy it word for word, even though all these words are great and everything is pretty much available and out there, but you need to create who you are, right? You need to create your brand, okay? So... I think I have shared everything that I was going to share. I think there was one more and it was simply, um, I'll bring it up on the screen. Gave you a lot of samples today, peeps, lots. Why? Because everybody's different, right? Oh, I need to close this tab here. Okay, good. Bad, eh, what are your thoughts? Are you going to change how you are gonna be a buyer's agent now? And what are you gonna change? What's the first thing that you wanna change about your buyer consultation delivery right now? What is that? Somebody tell me in the chat what you're gonna do. I have, um, couple of things. I need to modify mine. Yes, Sue, Sue. I can see the added value this provides. Need to work on questionnaire. Okay, questionnaire. Yes. I just worked on this last night. It takes time. Yeah, Adela, it does take time, right? It does take some time. So anybody else want to share anything that they're going to change in, in the way that they work? And what was your greatest takeaway from today? we're back. Greatest takeaway. What is it? If, if you want somebody to be exclusive to you, I just want you to be able to answer the question. Um, I will give them the criteria and the questionnaire. Yeah. Yeah. I need to work on the questionnaire. Um, ask yourself, what do you offer? Right? What do you offer? This is what I offer as a buyer's agent. These are my services. This is what they include. Right now, they don't pay you anything. 
but they're going to pay you with the greatest thing that they can pay you is their loyalty. And they're going to pay you with their exclusivity and they're going to pay you with their referrals, but only because they absolutely 100% believe that what you are going to provide them is everything that they need. You are providing them above and beyond resources, information, uh, education. They understand your best, that their best interest is at heart with you, right? The detail of the process. Yes, I'm going to get lost in the shuffle with everything going on. If you got it together, I feel better. That, that's huge right there because it presents the fact that you do have it together whether it's in a digital presentation, a handout, but taking the time to stop and say, we do need to have a consultation. We need to have a conversation. I'm not just a door opener. Then who are you, right? Who are you? It says we are, who are you? Okay, so before we close up, any last words from anyone that anyone wants to share? Something you're going to do different? I know that somebody that's not here really wanted the buyer consultation, and there's a lot of questions that we can, we can ask. You're welcome, Sue. You're welcome. Um, and the digital consultation, yeah, it's, it's definitely the way to go. We, we are meeting people. And even if you don't get to do a Zoom with them like we're doing now, which I think you should, um, you should be doing Zooms with people. It's so much easier and convenient. But what are you sending them? Right? What, can, what can you send them? Maybe you don't want to send them 26 pages. Maybe you have five things you want to share. Pull out the ones that are super important and that's it. But they have something. And then maybe you piece it out, if that makes sense. So what I mean by piecing it out is saying, I send them in the initial consultation, when we're just getting to know each other, I send them five. After the five, and I'm able to sit with them, I present them slides six through 12. Then once we are getting ready to write an offer, I do 12. I don't care. The point is you need to know what your process is, right? Does that make sense? So, okay, guys, uh, the, that's today's buyer consultation. I hope you got lots of value out, out of it. And for those that didn't make it, I know that you're probably gonna watch it later. Uh, but yes, definitely have something that you're sending to people. Some people, by the way, before I, I end, there's, there's another really cool program called Prezi. And there's some other ones out there too. I'm not gonna be able to name them all, rattle them off. P-R-E-Z-I. Prezi is a really cool uh, digital way that when you send it on your phone, I might do a Prezi presentation for you guys um, just to give you some insight. But you send it to them digitally and let's say they call you on your sign call or you, you return, you know, a, a lead or whatever. And it's, it's like it, they just touch it and it goes and, and it, it just it's really cool. And it's a digital slide. So look up P-R-E-Z-I, do a Prezi presentation, create it like that, create it the way I showed you, get Breakthrough Broker, find what works for you, but get better at sharing with people why hiring you there's no reason they should be hiring anybody else but you. Bring value to the table in an amazing way and earn that they love you to death and the exclusivity is hands down. You're not never going with anybody else, okay? That's the whole point of getting better at buyer consultations.